I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review and welcome back. We have another paid request, this time from Andrew Chilton. He has two. And one I'm going to talk about now. One may be a little bit later as soon as I find the film to watch. So that might take a little bit. But for now, thank you so much, Andrew Chilton. Uh, if anyone wants to send in any paid requests for reviews, re-reviews, topics, reactions, lists, reacting to any type of look pretty much any type of video you just send the request either directly to my paypal or join my patreon both things are down below in the info box and i'll get to it as soon as i can now this is for ernest in the army which came out in 1998 it was the final film sally involving jim varney as the character ernest p Worrell. now before i go on to the movie there may be oh, people who watch this and go, who the hell, what the hell is Ernest? So to give a little bit of backstory, Jim Varney, very talented guy. He would also be the voice of a character in the Toy Story movies. He was the dog that was the slinky. The, he was in the live action version, the Beverly Hillbillies. And he's been in a few other stuff, but he's mostly known for playing this character. Now it started... Sometime in the 80s where him and this other guy, John Cherry III, who would go on to direct pretty much all of the Ernest movies, they thought they would create this character and Ernest P. World got the same type of outfit, same type of cap, and he's a guy who he thinks he knows more than he really does, but at the same time he's a very endearing, nice, kind never cruel, never mean, never rude type of character, kid-friendly, no blue cursing type of humor. He means well, he tries to do the best that he can, it's just that a lot of times he's over, in over his head, his idiocy, and it's very slapsticky and a cartoonish, like Three Stooges, like that live-action cartoon type of quality. It's not realism. When you got into the movies, either his face was very rubbery, like an early Jim Carrey. Yeah. And a lot of his comedy, like I said, involved slapstick or him getting hurt. Or, again, just the way he utilized his verbiage in these sort of, I don't want to say monologues, but again, the way he talked where sometimes you play like different characters. Sometimes, as Ernest, he... Like I said, he would think he knew more than he really does, but again, he always means well, and that was, I, the way Jim Varney played him was just like a sweetheart, endearing, very endearing character. It's one of the variety of reasons why I enjoyed watching this character growing up as a kid. So they created this character for TV commercials to sell dairy products to... Advertise the local news program for wherever area he's doing the commercial for. Like this local news. 
WXYN or whatever the hell the letter letters happen to be. A variety of products. And you can even find them on YouTube. In fact, he even pitched Mel Yellow, which is very nice. Being since it's my favorite drink. I didn't know that till years and years later when I bought this Ernest set that said Ernest Greatest Hits Volume 1. I went, what is this? I'm like, oh. As a kid, I did not know he was a commercial guy. I just knew him of the movies. It wasn't until many, many years later when I f saw those DVDs, <clears throat> and then well before YouTube, I'm like, wow, and learned more about the, the character. Now... His commercials would be local, but then he got into nationwide status. Decently popular to the point that someone said, I wonder if he could work in a movie. Because Jim Varney, very talented guy. So they, they did Ernest Goes to Camp, and it made a bit of money. Then he got a three-picture deal with, I believe it was Touchstone, Touchstone Pictures. And that was Ernest Saves Christmas, Ernest Goes to Jail, and Ernest Steered Stupid. All films I enjoy, my favorite being Ernest Steered Stupid. Now, sadly with Ernest Steered Stupid for the studio, it did not make the money that they wanted. They felt it was a box office disappointment. Technically, it didn't bomb. These movies were made for little, little tiny budgets. So, it made money, but just it made less than the previous films, and again, it was called a box office disappointment. Thus, there was no renewing of the deal. So then Jim Varney and the director, John Cherry III, who, like, he directed like all of the Ernest films, they're like, what are we going to do next? Well, they made a film called Ernest Rides Again, which was supposed to go into theaters, but pretty much became a, a direct-to-video film, pretty much. And even at the end of that film, they advertised Ernest Goes to School, which seemed like that was going to be a film that was going to theaters, and that did not as well. And then the rest of them, Rides Again, Goes to School, Slam Dunk Ernest, uh, Goes to Africa, In the Army, they all went direct to video. And you could tell that the budgets got cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. In fact, for what I understand, this wasn't necess necessarily supposed to be the last Ernest film. There was actually talks of making an Ernest pirate movie where somehow Ernest gets on a pirate ship and has to deal with pirates. But the director said the this guy, Jim Var he's just too sick because of the lung cancer. And Sally, a few years after this film, he passed away. And again, very sad. It's just sad for a lot of reasons. It's sad that he didn't get picked up after Steered Stupid because that was a good movie. So then the budgets dwindled. So it didn't have as much of a slick production compared to Saves Christmas and, and such. Like, you look at Steered Stupid, there's some good you know, practical effects. And, you know, the trolls look neat. The Kyoto Bros who did the Critters films. And then Saves Christmas, you know, the reindeer flying sequences. And <clears throat> then you get to this. Like, if you compare Ernest Steers Stupid and Saves Christmas to this, it's like comparing Independence Day to a Roger Corman sci-fi channel film. It just... Oh, not even Roger Corman. Take Roger Corman out of it. Compare an Independence Day to a sci-fi channel movie. It, it just... It, it's disheartening the, the how far that da went down. Now, I know it's like seven minutes in, I haven't talked about this film. I don't know if I hated this movie. It would not be my least favorite Ernest film. That would go to either... Goes to School, Slam Dunk Ernest, Goes to Africa. Those are my three least favorite ones. I would at least put this above those because... I don't mind the idea of Ernest being in the army... We've seen comedies, granted, done more successfully, a la Stripes with Bill Murray. <laughs> Hell, even In the Army Now with Pauly Shore, I have to say, is better than this movie. I like In the Army Now with Pauly Shore. Even that had more of a budget and more laughs than this. And it just... 
On the flip side, one of the reasons I didn't hate it, it was nice to see Jim Varney, Jim Varney himself in it. It was interesting to see the director, John Cherry III, play a role in this as a good friend of Ernest that you see at the beginning and the very end of the film. It was just nice to put a face to the director that all the time I would see his name at the beginning of these movies directed by. I'm like, okay, there's a face to it. And while he's not a great actor, at least John Cherry, you could tell him and Jim Varney were good friends. So there's a little rapport that's decent. And in a way, it it kind of has an ending for the Ernest character that's kind of neat. This is like very faintest of faint praise. Yeah, it's it's an hour and 20 some minutes, so it's not too long. But there's a lot of... I'm probably giving this very... I'm being very easy on the film. But... Again, if, you, if you're a fan of like Ernest Saves Christmas... The, you go into this, it's like, wow, you see a big drop in quality. Maybe I'm not getting so rage-worthy because I know there are worse. Like the ones I mentioned. Because and part of me wishes that John Cherry the Third did not direct all of these movies. I wish someone else took a crack at it. I don't know who. I have to drop off the tip of my tongue from the top of my head. I don't know who I would pick. But it would be nice to see what another director would have done with Jim Varney in this character. And John Cherry did fine in the early films, but just the fact that he did, like, every single one. It would have been nice if someone else put their two cents in it. <clears throat> I believe he directed all of them. I could be wrong on that. But it seems like most of the ones I saw, I kept seeing his name over and over again. So, ten minutes in, what's the plot of the film? Ernest is with his buddy, played by Jan John Cherry the Third. Ernest works at a golf course, and he works at the driving range. Gets in a vehicle, steers it with his feet, uses stretches out to get the golf ball balls up and into the back of his vehicle. One thing leads to another. He talks with his friend. He says, oh, I want to drive the vehicle. I want to drive these big vehicles. Let me drive this. No, no, no. Yeah, be in the army or the army reserves. So it's one of those things that the only reason he really goes into the army is to drive big vehicles. And I went, is that really? I mean, yeah, for, even for a goofy comedy, is that really the like the best reason you give for getting... Ernest into the army, which is more the army reserves, not. But still, uh, that's the, that's the best you could come up with. He wants to drive big vehicles. Be a fucking truck driver. I mean, if you're a truck driver, which I don't know, maybe that'd be something. A road trip movie with Ernest, like a version of Pee Wee's Big Adventure. But it's Ernest going through the country with all these different crazy weird type of characters like Pee Wee went through. That'd be interesting. Tim Burton do an Ernest movie. People think that's crazy, but he did do a Pee Wee Herman movie. So, and yeah, Pee Wee's Bit Adventure, just like Ernest had, hey Vern, it's Ernest. I would see a Tim Burton Ernest movie. <laughs> Although, granted, it'd be just a rip off of Pee Wee's Bit Adventure, but I'd see it. More than, than this, like at least someone like Tim Burton could maybe bring, bring some visual creativity and his name would garner a, a bit of a sufficient budget. I didn't people, it was crazy. I did, he did a Pee Wee Herman movie, although by this time I don't think he would be willing to do that. But I'm just, I think Jim Varney for me makes this at least somewhat watchable, even with the lines aren't the best, just his sincerity to what he brought to the character and at this point I think he still he was sick with lung cancer and like the early stages and you know what watching the film I didn't notice maybe people were sharper 
eyes or sharper, whatever. But I, I mean, the fact that you got through with it, that's pretty commendable. And you even silly stuff like he's doing this voice, like Mission Impossible, is like, this voice will self-destruct in five seconds. <laughs> And it's one of the few earnest films that actually references a previous movie. Because he's talking to his buddy and Ernest mentions, I was a summer camp counselor once. So, at the very least, Ernest goes to camp is in this timeline. I mean, I guess to assume all the movies are in some timeline, but it's kind of those weird... There was, a, there was a point where it was like, are they in the same timeline? But then, again, this does reference Ernest Goes to Camp, which is interesting. So anyway, he goes to the army to drive big vehicles. The army reserve, I should say. And he doesn't play a lot of like other characters. Really the only one, well there's two. One is like this drill sergeant that's talking about this vehicle with packed to the deals with weapons and it starts falling apart. The other, a takeoff of Lawrence of Arabia where he's giving this big speech, but as he's doing it, he's sinking further and further into quicksand. It's like a, a not a dream scene, but a, a daydream, I should say. He's daydreaming. And I just like the idea that a character would keep doing the speech as he's going in quicksand, but he just doesn't pay attention to it. So I don't mind that idea. But then he did sort of weird jokes. Was that weird but just jokes that didn't work. Like he's with his buddy and this third guy. And then they just start talking to the camera. Like you're in the reserves. A-R-M-Y. P-O-P-L-E. Popo? What's wrong with Popo? I guess misspell people. And it's like, what is this going? Is this trying to be a take on the Mickey Mouse song? M I C K Y M O U S E. I just. <sighs> cringeworthy humor like that. Uh, just fell flat to me. And then it's just. One, this UN commander comes in. And says, you gotta go do this, and you gotta do this. At this point, Ernest is like eating this fruit candy. And at moments like this, Jim Varney tries to do the best that he can. But I can't go over there. Uh, I don't know anybody over there. And my lips will peel. <laughs> and he's eating all this fruit candy, and the guy gets pissed. Like, eat all of it. He's eating all of it. He punches Ernest in the stomach, so of course Ernest <laughs> lets all the stuff onto the guy's face and he's trying to pull it off. And then sticks it to a truck, but then the truck goes backwards and runs over the guy, but he's still okay. At the end, is that slapstick? John Cherry the Third is down the film too much because. And that's another issue with, with this film is number one, a lot of it is about the Middle East. I don't know if the Middle East. Is really comedy material for an earnest movie. Because you think of the Middle East. Granted this is before 9-11 and all that other stuff. But it's just watching it today. The fast talk about the Middle East. And it just. It's a bit weird of a backdrop to put, put Ernest in. Maybe that's just me. That's why I think while it would have been typical. I think it would have been better if Ernest was just in basic training. Yes, it'd be a ripoff of Stripes and a good chunk of In the Army now, but that's one of the reasons why those films worked. It's because a lot of it is the training portion. And you do a little bit of war at the end, and yeah, that's more that'd be more typical, but when you're doing a comedy, the basic training makes it easier for us to laugh. And then when you get to the third act. Well, the arm that was a little bit longer than the third act. It's, it's a bit trickier to have humor in those situations. So, uh, yeah, Ernest in basic training, I think that actually would have been a better fit and funny for the character than what they did here. And so, 
not only that, but then John Cherry the Thirst character, he has like a heart attack. And then he's out until the end of the movie. And I'm like, that's a bit fucking severe. I mean, they play off comedically where Arno, uh, er, Erno, who the hell's Erno? Ernest is trying to help him, but it's just, eh, I don't know. Throughout the film, there's also this narration from this guy talking about how he's a prisoner and he's waiting for the American hero to save us. And there's even a point, he's literally narrating while in his jail cell. Lay of pans, and the guy's just staring off, narrating. I'm like, that's like, this guy's schizophrenic. I didn't think you needed that. So, of course, Ernest goes over there. He meets this little boy that we've seen throughout. Little boy, I'm sorry, I don't think he did a good job. I really don't. Other pieces of comedy. Ernest tries to save a jellyfish. The UN commander's like, what the fuck are you doing? Do push-ups and the jellyfish keeps sticking to his face. He meets up with the boy. They become friends. He makes these heavy as hell pancakes. This female report gets kidnapped. He wants to go after her. He does. Then you get to the third act where he's rescuing the reporter, rescues other people. They get captured. The boy saves them, they drive away, there, there's this missile attached to it, as well as the UN commander who got kidnapped with the reporter. Also, you find the UN commander is a, is a, how do I put it, he's a turncoat, because he's also working with these other bad guys that we see from time to time, which is like a James Bond doctor, like Dr. Claw with his cat, or, you know, Donald Pleasance with the white cat. Like that type. All but in shadow and having the white cat. and Like something from a James Bond movie. I'm like where is this coming from too? Why do we have this in, in the movie? And so it's just a lot. And just the way it's shot. The way it looks is very cheap. Like you can tell it was a limited amount of sets. A limited, limited amount of scope. And the, just the way it's shot just... Screams like someone that would work more on just TV. Although I've seen TV work that were better than that. It just very flat direction. Cheap production values. The end of the film, to, to spoil it, just why not? He launches the, the missile but is not armed. To defeat the, the guy who's working with the James Bond villain and... Really nothing comes of that. Like It's not like that guy gets a comeuppance or Ernest has to deal with that guy or at all. Just sort of not even mention again. The reporter thinks Ernest by kissing him but then he has these lips that peel and grosses her out and Giovanni walks to, to try to talk to her. And then there's a shot of the kid looking off into the distance with Ernest's hat. And the narration is talking about this kid grew up and brought peace to the land. And finally peace was in the Middle East. And there's all these statues and there's a little inscription. Stip by your buddy. You know what I mean? So I guess technically Ernest helped bring peace to the Middle East. Which I mean like, if that, that's the way to end the Ernest character... But it, it is such a disheartening thing to watch in the fact that I those early Ernest films were really good and just how the budgets were slashed and the, the formula was just getting more tired and there's no fresh blood with writers or director. Like you have pretty much the same director in each fucking film. It just... In fact, I should check that real quick because that's going to bother me. But if it's Sean Cherry directed all these. But just. Uh, again, it's, it's a bit. Dis I can't say disappointing. 
But there's a reason why I did like a four point something, four point seven and I to be perfectly understandable. And while, you know, Jim Varney for me goes a long way. It, it, it. Yeah, Ernest goes to camp, saves Christmas, goes to jail, steers stupid, rides again, slam dunked Ernest, goes to Africa, in the army. And then technically worked with Jim Varney and this one called Dr. Otto and the Riddle of the Gloom Beam. The, the, the TV show. There's a video in 87 called, Hey Vern, win $10,000. I think that's on YouTube. And then after this, the director did the all new adventures of Lauren Hardy in For Love or Mummy. Uh, yeah, that... Uh, I don't think that... Uh, what the hell was that movie? Oh, Bronson Pinchot as Stan and Gaylord Sartain who was in the older Ernest films as uh, Ali. Which is, that's weird. If Dealer Sartain was willing to work with the director, why did Dealer Sartain stop being in these movies? Did Dealer Sartain, and it was him and this character named Bobby, they were in like the first, well, him and Bobby were in Saves Christmas, Goes to Jail. And then Gailer Sartain was in Ghost of Camp. And then the guy who played Bobby was in Steered Stupid. Uh, I don't know. That's being nice to have making of. John Cherry III, what the hell is he doing? Why don't he tell stories? He directed all of these movies. He could tell the stories about all of these films. Answer some of these questions. How much was the budget slash compared to, you know... Hey, what do I know, right? So, long story short, too late. It's like 25 minutes now. Jim Varney tries to do the best he's can. There are a few moments that got me hmm, chuckle. But just the much lower production values. The, the Middle East backdrop, I just don't think works with an earnest movie. Again, I think if it was just strictly the boot camp thing, like I said, it might be cliche, but I think that would have been more successful. It would be nice if they had a bit more money so it doesn't look so much like a TV movie. And... It, it wasn't a whole lot of funny. You know, a lot of the jokes are kind of like, meh. Or been there, done that, or just... Even the, the stuff with the pain case, it just reminded me of, I want to say it was Ernest Rise Again. Where... Well, who made these? Goodyear? <laughs> he's putting the wrong shit in his mouth. Just like here, he's putting this hard-ass pancake and he thinks it's syrup, but he puts motor oil in his mouth. As I kind of saw that dad in a way in uh, Ernest Rise Again, and then just, yeah, just, if you're a fan, you don't see all these movies, it's just, it's just sad how they just gave him peanuts and fucking pennies to work with. Right, maybe that, maybe that now will work with the script. That's what I mean. I think fresher eyes and fresher talent would have been welcomed. I think that's another issue. I said John Cherry the Third directing every single one of these movies. Like, give someone else a shot. New fr pair of fresh eyes. That would have been nice too. Was it some deal that he had to direct every single film? I don't know, I don't know. So with that said, thanks for watching, take care, and we will see you guys later. Bye-bye.